All right, welcome back. We did see U.S. stocks open higher. The Canadian market also getting a lift after some recent selling pressure. Whether the gains hold could depend on, for example, how the bond market interprets economic data and central bank policy going forward. We're going to get a U.S. Fed decision this week. Our Bloomberg partners surveyed a big group of investors on the subject of how high interest rates and bond yields are impacting investor sentiment. And even though stocks have come off their recent highs, the survey findings suggest the majority of respondents still see indices such as the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 as being overvalued, 62% of respondents sharing that view. And we know the 10-year Treasury yield has been dancing around a psychologically notable level of 5%. The survey finding that if we see that rate reached for an extended period of time, the majority of respondents believe it would be a hard landing likelihood for the U.S. economy. Let's bring in Scott Rennie, senior global equity strategist at Wells Fargo Investment Institute and one of our regular guests. And Scott, uh, obviously, as we're sort of rolling into the end of 2023, investors are, are feeling a little bit unsettled right now. What's your assessment? Well, they are, John. And I think, you know, you have a couple of things going on. Uh, you know, we have one more uh, Fed hike penciled in. I don't think it'll happen uh, this week. Credit conditions are still tight. Uh, in our opinion, these earnings estimates are still too high. Uh, and you mentioned the yield. I mean, you know, let, let's face it, a 5% yield historically isn't isn't all that, you know, big of a deal. But, but when you when you're, when you're coming from a zero interest rate environment for an extended period of time, uh, it gives people reasons to, to get worried. So, you know, we're only 13 percent off the January 2022 high. So, you know, we've had a pullback. It hasn't been big. There could very well be a little bit more downside here. But, you know, that's an opportunity. I mean, I think you have to play defense. Um, we can maybe start to leg in a little bit now, but but we think we'll see stocks a little bit lower here uh, into year end. OK, well, you don't make calls on specific stocks, but you do make calls on the broader indices like the S&P 500. So um, based on what you're saying, let's 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 add in the numbers that you're uh, putting into your forecast. Number one, that you would not be surprised to see the S&P 500, I believe, finish the year a little bit weaker than where it is right now. But number two. As you look into next year, you see the S&P 500 being reasonably higher than where it is right now. Is that fair? Yeah, you know, that is that is fair. You know, we've got a 4100 target out there for year and this year. And, you know, what we've been talking to our clients about is, is OK, it's great. We're looking for 4700 is our official target for year in 2024. But, you know, it's going to be a bumpy ride between here and there. And I mentioned some of the headwinds that, that we see anyway. So what we want our clients doing is they have a plan. You know, I mean, if you're looking out two, three, five plus years, you want to buy stocks when they're down and they're down now. Uh, as I said, you can maybe start to leg in a little bit, but we think they'll be down a little bit more and you need to have a plan. And, and when you get the opportunity, which I think we're going to get further opportunities, you need to pull the trigger and step in. So that's what we're trying to you know, talk to our clients about. Always easier said than done. But uh, but that's our that's our game plan. We had a guest earlier in the program who was making a fairly bullish case for gold and gold related stocks. When I looked to some of the ideas you gave to our producing team this morning on large cap equity sectors that you're leaning towards. I think I see healthcare materials and industrials here. Is that correct? Yeah, you know, it's kind of odd, uh, John. We're getting all kinds of questions from clients on, okay, you guys think there's a recession coming up, let's say, in the early months of 2024, uh, yet you're overweight industrials and materials. And I think from our perspective, um, you know, with all this, you know, trillions of dollars of deficits, uh, stimulus, infrastructure spending, whether it's roads, bridges, uh, airports, um, uh, EV battery plants or semiconductor plants, um, industrials and materials are going to benefit from all of that deficit spending. So whether you like it or not, whether you agree with all this government deficit spending or not, um, it's out there and it's going to continue to push industrials and materials. And then, of course, health care. Uh, health care is very defensive. So we're so we're still trying to play defense, but uh, um, you know we're we're looking out and saying, okay, nine months, twelve months from now, 
We think things are going to be better. We're looking for a recovery in the second half of 2024. When do we when do we start to position for that? And we're not quite there yet. Scott, I have one last question for you. It's about the bond market. And I know people have talked about maybe equity weakness recently is because yields that are available on government debt look attractive. And then that starts to steal some of the attention away from equities, especially if maybe the profit picture is looking a little murky to strategists like yourself. I did see Barron's put uh, bonds on the cover, and that makes a few people <laughs> nervous. Um, yeah, definitely I, nervous. I, yeah, I, I think we I think we do have to have a conversation around the fact that higher yields has meant pressure in the bond market, and people who have been trying to call the right time on when to actually add bonds to your portfolio, at least if you don't want to see some of the actual pricing weakness impact your portfolio return, that has been very difficult for people. Uh, to, to call correctly. Do you think this is the right time to be moving into fixed income? Well, we have liked, you know, let's say the 10 year yield. Once we hit four and a quarter there, uh, we started encouraging clients to uh, uh, extend duration to lock in some of these longer term rates. So, you know, for us, anything north of four and a quarter uh, is, is attractive and, and certainly could rates trade a little bit higher. I think they probably could. You know, we've got some auctions. We've had a couple of crummy auctions here lately that hasn't helped uh, the yield, but uh, we've got a lot more auctions to go. Interest rates could drift a little bit higher, uh, but we think we're, we're close to the top on that, and we certainly want our clients um, locking in some of these longer-term rates. Scott, 